Okay, this is um, the crank assembly for a 1930 Royal Enfield Model K 1000cc V-twin and um, I've had the whole engine stripped down and the crank stripped right down it's had a full um, overhaul and it's provided a little bit of entertainment and uh, cliffhanger moments here and there um, including a cracked flywheel which I'll come to in a moment but this is hopefully the finished article um, I've got a new crank pin in it I've got new big end rollers in it and I've even fitted new outer races for the big ends into the conrods and honed them out myself until they were a good fit with the smallest of three sizes of rollers you can get for these so there's room for it to wear so perhaps in the next hundred years or so it might need rebuilding again with uh, the next size up but uh, it should see my generation out all being well. Um, I've also got new small end bushes in the conrods which are reamed to size and the uh, cranks back together and trued up and I'll just give it a little spin here you can see that on the left the gauge reads in uh, thousandths of an inch we're getting about two thousandths of an inch there a bit of roughness in that centre actually I need to get a new one so we've got about two thousandths of an inch there and this one is metric but what it's showing us from one uh, number to the next is 0.1 of a millimetre or four thousandths of an inch so we've got about three thousandths of an inch at most there so we put that together and bear in mind that the clock's needles are rising and falling together one cancels the other out so in actual fact We've got a real world one thousandths of an inch run out there on the uh, shafts, so that's very, very good. I'm more than happy with that. Um, now we're going to take a look at the old flywheels, which um, I had a scary moment when I realised that there was a crack in the time inside flywheel where the crank pin fits. And we'll just go over there and have a look at the old crank pin and the old flywheels. I was lucky enough. Um, and thanks as well to Alan Hitchcock at Hitchcock's Motorcycles for putting me in touch with someone who had these because uh, they're probably quite thin on the ground now. That's the original drive side flywheel. Um, nothing wrong with that one. This is the time inside flywheel, which if I turn it over, whether the camera will pick it up or not, I don't know. Um, but in here, when I push the new crank pin in, you can see these holes are drilled here, they're at the ends of cracks that either either appeared or were there before. It's difficult to tell really, but uh, either way when the new crank pin was in and home you could see cracks there. So uh, I knew there was a problem and it's also apparently not unknown for this to happen to these flywheels. So when the new uh, crank pin uh, what happened was, here's the old one, and that drops in there, and it's, well, there's a, you press it, and there's a very, very slight wobble. Well, the new crank pin was even slightly more wobbly than that in both these old flywheels and the ones over there. So what I did, I had no choice really, because these flywheels are cast iron, there's no giving them. Uh, steel flywheels will give a little bit when you press a tapered crank pin in. Uh, cast won't, we'll just get to a point where it'll crack, uh, which in the case of this one it had either happened sometime before or happened when I was trying to fit the new crank pin, although I don't recall getting up to the point of using much force on it. Um, but anyway, what I did with the, the flywheels we got over there and the new crank pin, I decided as there was a tiny sort of wobble that I would lap it in with very very fine grinding paste and oil um, and literally just lap it for half a minute or so then clean it all off and just check again because obviously I didn't want it to go too far because you are actually reducing the overall width of the assembly as the crank pin settles into the flywheel but in the end 
I got to a point where the crank pin would just sort of drop into the hole under its own weight and actually sort of stay put so it was gripping the hole well. The crank pin and the uh, boss that it fitted into in the flywheel were both matched perfectly to each other and that's what we've got over there. So I did that with both ends of the crank pin in both flywheels. So um, it all went together nicely, it's trued up nicely of course and uh, the, uh, the nuts on the end of the crank pin are certainly done up tighter than they were when I undid them to dismantle the original crankshaft. But again, I was a bit wary about doing them up too tight because obviously you're pulling a tapered hard steel pin into a cast iron flywheel so theoretically you could probably tighten to a point where bang get a crack in the flywheels and that was the last thing that I wanted so uh, just had to use a little bit of I suppose common sense and uh, cross my fingers a bit but the uh, the nuts done up nice and firmly and the uh, flywheels are nice and firm against each other nicely clued up so I'm hoping that these can go into the engine and just sort of play their part in being able to make a nicely renovated engine that will be more or less like new and ready to go for many many thousands of miles. So my next uh, stage will be to uh, get these ready to put into one of the crankcases. I'm all okay for the, uh, the timing side main bearing. I've got a little bit of a hurdle to get over on the drive side um, and that is that we've got a new main shaft there it's just because new outer races for the crankcases aren't available so I'm going to have to conjure something up to uh, overcome some pitting in that. Um, but I'm sure we'll get over it and once that one's cleared and uh, a solution's been found then the engine can go back together and uh, be put back into running order I would think. But that's where we're at for now and uh, that's one major headache sorted out so I'm very very pleased with that anyway.